Hey guys, welcome back as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're going to be checking out an actual damage paladin build. What? Paladins damage? Preposterous. Paladins are supports, don't you know? 120% true. If you're pushing progression, if you're trying to do anything high level, definitely go with a support build. If you join a party or a raid group with a paladin, that's what they expect you to be. But my friends, you're also fully capable of doing tons upon tons of area of effect damage to get your chaos dungeons done, to do your dailies, to run around, to do other things, and finally to explore some of the skills that you don't really get to use. Interested? Let's check it out. Starting off with the skills, we're gonna go with the execution of justice on your Q. Keep in mind, I want you to treat these as suggestions. This being an off meta build, your off spec of sorts, you don't really need to treat it as the gospel, yes? So if you feel this might be better than that, or I'm more comfortable with this instead of that, definitely go for it. Execution of justice, we're gonna go with Rune Prison so you can drag them all in and pow them. Strength release and express fury. On your W, your executioner sword. Now, this is your interrupt, yes, but. This time we're going to be working it into the DPS rotation. We're going to go with Stigmata, Challenger's Will, and Broad Slash. Next up, Charge. Now this is still a utility tool. Yes, a utility tool, utility and tool. It's just a tool to get around, simply to get in and out of position. Some big AOE is going to hit you, get out of it. You want to close the gap between you and the boss, use it. 100% amazing skill for the Paladin, excellent mobility and shining protection. This is what I'm going to be recommending for it. Holy Sword. Ah, this one is an absolutely amazing paladin skill. We're gonna be going with Stigmata, Weak Point, and Release Light. And in this setup, with the uh, Rage Rune, if you hit enough enemies, you can basically spam this one, one after another. Wrath of God, we're gonna be using this one, it's a fantastic skill, we're gonna go with Wide Stroke, obviously we're gonna be covering more area, Faith and Light Guardian. Holy Protection, do you even use it on a DPS Paladin build? And I'm gonna go with yes, it's still one of the strongest, if not the strongest, Paladin ability. Quick Pace, Purifying and Thunderous uh, Protection. Heavily Blessing, this is gonna deal the most amount of damage with a single keystroke and the animation is really quick. You just raise your sword into the air and boom, tons of damage. We're gonna go with Faith, Weightlessness and Heavenly Requiem and you're gonna be doing so much damage instantly clearing whatever stands around you in Chaos Dungeons and all whatnot. Holy Explosion is a skill that we don't really get to see all that often simply because it's not that great but for AoE power try this one out for size even though I keep swapping it in and out and testing other abilities. We're gonna be going with Swift Fingers, Wide Explosion and Prepared Explosion. As for runes we're gonna be going with Gale Wind on your Holy Explosion, Quick Recharge on your Heavenly blessing holy protection is gonna have rage and again the better quality you have for these definitely go for it so if you got epic go for epic if you got legendary go for legendary and so on and so forth wrath of god was gonna have a blue gale wind rune holy sword is gonna have an epic rage rune we're gonna have quick recharge on charge we're gonna have gale wind on executioner sword and finally one epic gale wind rune on execution of justice again if you got better quality or lower quality don't feel too bad about it it doesn't mean that the build doesn't work just because you don't have a rune per se. Now would you like me to jump into the practice room to show you how it works against standing still targets in a controlled environment? Of course not. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be taking this one into actual combat to see exactly how well it does for what it's supposed to do. So we're going to go and do a little bit of chaos dungeon. Now this is how I like to play. You don't need to play like me but I definitely enjoy this one. I just move around a little and then I wait for them. I activate my shield and I wait for them to all get in range. Are you all in range? Yes you are. Activate! Boom! <laughs> Absolutely insane, you basically cleared everybody, that's the power of Heavenly Blessing. And again, I just wait for them to get in range, then I cast a single skill, because you see, this is the amount of damage you can do. Obviously, for more engaging gameplay, you actually gotta move around and all whatnot, but everybody will be coming to you anyway, so you don't really need to move from the center of the map. Once again, I got my shield up, I'm gonna be casting this time Wrath of God, tons upon tons of damage, and you're gonna be able to easily clear whatever stands before you in the Chaos Dungeon. So you see, you no longer need to wait on somebody else to help you with the damage and you to support them. You're gonna be able to do your own Chaos Dungeons really quickly and efficiently, and you're gonna be a whole lot more quicker at doing your dailies and just basically running around. When I also like to use this build is when I do things like, for example, yes, you're overpowering the content or you're boosting a lower level char or in something like Guardian Raids, for example, definitely pick up the damage build instead because it still has a little bit of supporty capabilities. Now, 
in the second room. I'm in the second room right now. You see my piety meter already up to 80%. What I like to do is stack the free bosses and then use my awakening. Boom! <laughs> that, my friends, is Alatane's Light and it deals a whole lot of damage. And of course, Sacred Executioner is fully charged now. Take a look at the damage. Now, if you're not familiar with Not Holy Sacred, Sacred Executioner, I wouldn't blame you because basically we don't really get to use this one a whole lot. But that means your blue skills right now are empowered and a whole lot more effective. Take a look at this. It's absolutely bloody insane and I 100% love it. It's a whole lot more engaging to play than something like a... Uh support paladin but obviously it does have its limitations gotta bear in mind this is fantastic for aoe damage but it's not so fantastic when it comes to actual single target dps for that we're gonna have to go another route this is the kind of damage you're looking at and as you can see i have no problem in clearing out the targets aoe style or otherwise careful for crowd control and that's basically the only issue you have at times a little bit of crowd control as for damage boom boom Tons upon tons. You can finish off the boss with Alatane's Light if you so desire, like so. Now normally Alatane's Light takes about 50% of her health and that was down to 30, so absolutely clear house, like so. Beautiful. Now the final room. The main reason I enjoy these builds is simply because I get to use skills that normally people are like, hey, don't use that skill. It's a bad skill, you know, it's for damage, DPS, Paladin, blah. And this is so much more engaging and fun to actually execute. It really feels like an actual holy warrior of sorts, you know, an actual holy warrior, not a guy crying in the corner and just casting support skills on his allies. I feel impactful, I feel empowered, and it's a whole lot of fun to execute and play. And last time I checked, that was the goddamn point of a game, yes, to have fun. I highly recommend you give this build a spin. It is good at what it does. From a AoE DPS perspective, it can run with certain DPS classes. From a single target perspective, we're gonna have to look at something else. But this is the build you wanna use if you're just running around, doing your dailies, doing your chaos, helping other friends, or essentially not doing high level end game things, but you should definitely pick up your support build, yes? If you're going to push, uh, I don't know, something like uh, Brel Shaza hard or anything of the sort, then definitely pick up your support build. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it. I'm having a whole lot of fun and I hope you guys will enjoy it as well. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Now, I know some of you will be like, hold on, bro, you didn't tell us about uh, the engraving. So important. Yes, I want you again to treat these as suggestions. These are not the gospel. This is an off spec we're using, yes? And because it's an off spec, we get to experiment. Obviously, Spirit Absorption and Raid Captain synergize beautifully well together and you can 100% go for it. Judgment is self-explained at this point and you can invest into this one even further and get yourself even more powerful uh, engravings. From my point of view it's not really worth it but you can 100% do that as well. As for uh, people ask about gems, I, I, don't, I don't get that question. Gems simply get the best gems for your abilities. It's as simple as that. It's really self-explained. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it for the AoE DPS Paladin build. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Now it's true, I'm a bit new at this uh, build for Lost Ark thing, so if you think I could have done something better or missed something, or you wanted more emphasis on certain aspects, please let me know in the comment section down below. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.